Live from our Maritimes News Center, this is CTV News. Here is Stephanie Sikos. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The military has arrived in the Maritimes to help communities hit hard by post-tropical storm Fiona. Hundreds of members are being fanned out to assist in the cleanup efforts. CTV's Kyle Moore reports from Cape Breton. People who live on this Glace Bay street have been stranded for several days. No way in and no way out. Just lucky there's no fires or any emergencies up here for aliens or anything because nobody would actually get up here. Power poles and large trees blocking the way. But earlier this afternoon, help finally arrived. A convoy of military personnel rolled into town, ready to push through the devastating damage. We have, like I said, about 60, 70 guys on ground now with a crew coming down from Halifax. So there's going to be a lot of people around working. Taking their marching orders from Nova Scotia Power, the job ahead of them is huge. Scenes like this one, large trees covered this house. The owner and her children had to be evacuated the night of the storm. I had both children taken out of the bed and we were sat in the middle of our living room because we weren't sure how much damage was done on the outside. A tree through the roof and now several holes remain. Unclear the extent of the damage. Amanda McIsaac is now staying elsewhere. Unclear if and when she'll be able to return home. I mean I was very scared but I was trying to hold it together for the kids. Uh, I kept the blinds pulled and try to be as strong as I could for for them so that they weren't as nervous they didn't see anything outside until we had to leave the house. Cleanup and power restoration is ongoing and will take a while yet. The mayor of the municipality telling residents to hang tight. It's going to be like this for some time. It is absolutely going to be like this for some time. This this uh, cleanup is is just beginning. It roared like a monster and I'm not exaggerating because it's uh, something I've never experienced. Days after Fiona's frightful visit, her path of destruction is visible on almost every corner. A storm residents who live here won't soon forget. I was very scared. I don't get scared too often, but I was scared, and I know there's thousands of people in this town that were more scared than me. Kyle Moore, CTV News, Glace Bay. Later this week, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says he will visit Atlantic Canada. Ottawa, meanwhile, has now outlined the initial assistance it's providing to provinces battered by Fiona over the weekend. In Nova Scotia, the Canadian Armed Forces are available to clear road links and to restore electricity. On PEI, some smaller communities are isolated and tens of thousands remain without power. Prime Minister and Defence Minister say roughly 300 Canadian Armed Forces members are being deployed. The Liberals are also pledging financial assistance where needed. Most people on Prince Edward Island remain without electricity tonight. More people lost power in Fiona than in Hurricane Juan. Power was restored to several thousand customers today, though close to 75,000 are still in the dark tonight. CTV's Jack Morse reports. At last count, about 75,000 homes and businesses are without power. To put that into perspective, there's only about 160,000 people living on PEI. 10,000 have had power restored since the height of the storm, 4,500 just this morning. But the focus is still on critical areas. The assessments are still ongoing and will go into the days, but and certainly we're prioritizing our, the needs of our critical infrastructure sites, uh, such as hospitals, schools, grocery stores, gas stations, to make sure that they're powered up. There are 89 crews in the field. That number is expected to grow to 107 by Wednesday. This is the biggest restoration effort in the history of Maritime Electric, worse than even Hurricane Juan. But the sheer devastation on Prince Edward Island, um, I'm not sure if others can match that. Um, with all due respect, I think that the, the significant amount of damage that we've had across the province is the worst storm I've ever seen. A small silver lining, major infrastructure like transmission lines and substations seems to have fared better than in Dorian. However, there is still no timeline on when regular residential neighborhoods will see power return. It's unfortunate that I that I can't give a, an actual restoration time, and I apologize for that. But the sheer magnitude of the um, trees that are down on our lines, our crews sometimes are having problems just trying to access the different sites as it is. Comfort centers are open across the province. The weather is relatively mild, so people are using the centers to recharge devices and connect to Wi-Fi. That, as government promises, a continued focus on power outages. The top priority right now is getting the lights back on. 
That's the backbone of when we can make significant progress in getting our province back on its feet. Power outages are now the biggest drivers of fuel shortages on the island. Though power was returned to a major fuel depot in Charlottetown yesterday, many gas stations are still without power, so there just aren't enough places to get fuel. Jack Morse, CTV News, Charlottetown. With more on this record-setting weather event, let's bring in our meteorologist, Kaylin Mitchell. Kaylin. Yeah, thank you, Stephanie. And we do have some finalized totals when it comes to some of the rain and some of the peak winds with the storm system. You can see as we check in on some of the rain totals, the highest amounts around eastern parts of Prince Edward Island, the east of Nova Scotia. There were many locations that reported totals in excess of 100 millimeters, even a few locations up to or excess, in excess of 200 millimeters of rain. As far as the peak winds go, some of the strongest wind gusts reported from the storm as well around that part of the Maritimes, including 131 kilometers per hour at Charlottetown, 179 kilometers per hour at Arisag in the north shore of Nova Scotia, and 149 kilometers per hour at Sydney in Cape Breton. There was damage to trees and structures and damage in coastal erosion because of the storm surge as well. And then there was the record that this storm system set, and that has to do with the barometric pressure. We've all heard about high and low pressure before. When pressure rises higher, we typically get into nicer weather, and we measure this in millibars, so 1,010 millibars or higher, fair sunny weather, mainly sunny or a mix of sun and cloud. And then as the pressure falls, we typically get into stormier and stormier weather conditions. Low pressure beginning around 1,000 millibars or less. When we start to see inclement conditions such as rain and snow and some gusty winds, it gets stormier as we fall down to around 990 millibars or less. That's when we typically start to see weather warnings, heavy rain, heavy snow, wind warnings. And then we get into our more extreme values, including uh, some of the most well, notorious weather systems to have hit the Maritimes, including Juan, which had a central pressure of 969 millibars, White Juan, which uh, had a central pressure of down to 959 millibars, and now Fiona, which has set a record in Canada, lowest barometric pressure on record, down to 932.7 millibars. Stephanie. Thanks, Caitlin. There were updates today from a variety of organizations involved in the post-Fiona response in Nova Scotia. Premier Tim Houston announced funding for residents as recovery continues. CTV's Jonathan McGuinness reports. Under heavy downpours, crews work to clear tree trunks and branches from the streets of Halifax. Uh, there's been a lot in this neighborhood because it's a very old neighborhood. I am very pleased at how quickly they're cleaning it up. There is a lot of it along eastern Nova Scotia up to Cape Breton. Uh, so we have several requests for assistance in, in regards to especially the prioritization of the reconnection uh, and, and uh, of fuel supply to the city. Nova Scotia's We're incident management on, director says gas stations will be opening soon. The Sydney terminal now is fully functional. Uh, their power has been restored. So Cape Breton will soon see a lot of local fuel uh, flowing into that region. Progress. But power is another concern. Fiona caused right. severe damage to the utility's infrastructure, but help is here and more is on the way. Officials say they're witnessing the biggest mobilization of crews in the history of Nova Scotia Power. Brought in hundreds of additional crews, um, all the way from Ontario, Quebec, all of Atlantic Canada, uh, the New England uh, states as well. Um, they're, they're on the ground right now, so we have over a thousand people on the ground right now as we speak. Fiona was also deadly. RCMP say it's believed 81-year-old Larry Smith was swept out to sea during the storm. The lower prospect man was last seen Friday evening. Um, our hearts go out to the family of Larry Smith. This is an unimaginable time for our province and I cannot imagine the additional pain that you are enduring right now. After offering his sympathies, the province's premier vowed today to help Nova Scotians recover from the destructive storm. $40 million has been set aside to assist with things like food loss, emergency lodging and tree clearing. I fundamentally believe that the role of government is to be there for Nova Scotians when they need help the most. And I can't not think of a more appropriate time for government intervention and to be there to help Nova Scotians. Jonathan McGuinness, CTV News, Halifax. Coming up later in the show, Kaylin will be back with your maritime weather forecast. But up next, we'll continue our coverage of the impacts of Fiona and the cleanup underway across the Maritimes. Stay with us.